uh, legal counsel and chief negotiator, I'm sure will be here in a few minutes. So I'd like to first of all welcome everybody. I think this might be a good opportunity if we just go around the room and introduce ourselves and possibly say which uh, school or association you're most closely affiliated with. So, uh, Ms. Brownell, so we start with you. Hi, my name is Katie Brownell Sullivan. I'm current SWBEA president, and I work at Mount Anthony Middle School. I'm Megan Morgan Pidlisi. I work at Mount Anthony Union High School and I am serving as chief negotiator. I'm Norm Bartlett. I work for Vermont NAA and I'm the esteemed consultant for the association. Can <laughs> <laughs> you I'm, believe that? <laughs> I'm Jen Austin from the middle school. I'm Carrie Gardner from Molly Stark and I am serving for At Large. I am Tiffany McKenna and I'm from Shaftesbury Elementary. I'm Jasper? Yes. <laughs> Deanna Danza, I'm from Monument Elementary. My name is Kathy Slade, I'm a teacher here at the CDC. My name is Michael Casanova, and I'm from Ben L. My name is I'm sure most of you know Richard. Uh, who is that? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm in the corner. Uh, I'm Andrew LaBarge, I'm over at Molly Stark. Very good. So, I'm sure most of you know Richard. Richard, introduce yourself. I'm um, Richard Bump. I uh, take, I try to make sense of these meetings when I write up the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Nick Goff, Human Resources. Jim Belkin, Superintendent. Tim Holbrook, and you. Scott McEnany, SBSU ESD, and Shaftesbury, Tom Shaftesbury. Frank Kinney, CDC, MAU. Rebecca Tattersall, Business Manager, CDC. Very good. Well, I'll just go through the agenda and hopefully uh, Dina will be here. Are there any public comments? Anybody like to make any opening statements? Uh, we'll move on then. The minutes? I, did we receive minutes, uh, Mike? Yeah. I mean, Nick? They're, yeah. They were, they were posted and they weren't really minutes. They were, they were notes because you guys didn't have a quorum. That's right. Um, so and they were posted to the website. Well, I don't think we need to approve because we don't have minutes, so we, we'll, move, we'll move right now. This is a, generally speaking, this, this first session that we have uh, is uh, devoted to two things. First of all, setting some ground rules that we would like to go over that we all uh, agree on. And the other thing would possibly, <coughs> if we have the time and, and, your, and each side is ready, it's an opportunity to uh, make some original proposals. Uh, I don't know, Norm, would you like to start off with some uh, just general ideas about ground rules? I think Katie, I think Katie's going to uh, excuse me, be the lead counsel here. I see. <laughs> um, last time we received ground rules that were used last time from Dina. Um, we do have an amendment to number seven, um, which uh, has a couple dates within it. Um, and it said the principal agenda for the meeting scheduled on, it should be today, November 21st. Um, and we would like to add the two following meetings, December 5th and December 19th, to propose new language um, to, to each other. We would like to have the next two meetings. Very good. Anybody here have any questions on that? Those would be the, the two dates. Let me write them down and I'll <laughs> forget them. That was uh, December the 5th. And December 19th. And December 19th, very good. And last time, um, Dina um, talked about a date um, for entering arbitration, but I think it would be best if we waited for her yeah, um, yeah. to discuss that. Well, one thing we may want to talk about a little bit is we, well, we're, waiting, well, we're waiting for her. Uh, most of you know Leon Johnson, who is here. And welcome, Leon. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we have a, we've had a number of different arbitrators over the years, and I don't know if, if this is an appropriate time to discuss it at all, but do you have any feelings about sticking with Ida Bell? Or do you want to talk we would, about We would have to caucus, but okay. we, we could get back to you on that. Very, very good. That would be, you know, as, as time goes on, there's so many people that are negotiating and in this process, it's often good to establish hope, oh, yeah? Hey. Welcome. And, um, and last time Dina suggested that we come up with a uh, sort of a deadline, like a date, um, that like if we're not settled by this particular date, um, we would agree to go to an arbitrator. Um, 
So if, if Dina needs a couple minutes to just... No, I'm not. Okay. All right. Absolutely multitask. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We were thinking that the uh, the Thursday before uh, February break would be our. What uh, day is that? We we had it, and then my phone's downstairs. That would be the thirteenth of February. The the thirteenth of February. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's that's right. You just I know you come in and move up. Uh, I heard you mention IRA. Yeah. And, and they, they were going to they were going to talk about it. Yeah. Are there other ish, things that you'd like to bring up in general ground rules? Um, the rest of the ground rules were acceptable to us. Again, it was um, for Dina um, just to catch up. We wanted to amend um, number seven in the ground rules. Um, it, with the principal agenda for the meeting scheduled on today would be adjusted. And then we would like the following two meetings, December 5th and 19th, to propose any language to the table. So no initial proposals. No, we, we have, we have an initial proposal. I'm sorry, so it's the modification, if there are other... Modifications, yes. Do we have a, a, a date, and we discussed the date at all, I'm sorry, I missed that first meeting, at which no new proposals would be uh, entertained? That's, that's what... Uh, that's what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what ground rule number seven addresses. Yeah. So okay. we would... I don't have a copy of that. Um, we would... This would allow us one more, one more meeting okay. uh, for both sides. All right. And um, we haven't even talked about this with Dino, but I think Dino will be our general spokesperson as we go through uh, discussing the different proposals. We, as you, uh, uh, reserve the right to caucus at any point that we, we were. These meetings will be in open session unless otherwise uh, notified and proclaimed by either, either side. Uh, does any member of this committee have anything they'd like to add to the general uh, ground rules? Yeah. Well, respect is always a plus. I don't know whether you had that down, but we definitely want to respect everybody's, everybody's opinions uh, for what they have to say and the views that they see <coughs> along that particular line. It should be a ground rule. Sure. Yeah. No, I'm good. We're all set. Okay. Okay. And if we go down to these things, uh, we've talked about uh, reconvening an open session. We'll move forward on that. Do you have some proposals that you would be willing to present to us? Yes. Very yeah. good. Well, why don't, uh, the spokesperson, how do you like to be addressed? Oh, me? No, we're going to do it. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm ready to present them. Okay. Uh, if you're, if you're agreeable. Um, you have copies here? We sure do. How would you like, while well, Megan's passing them out, how would you like to handle proposals? Would you like to caucus after receiving proposals yes, and come back I, I think so. and hear reasoning? Or would you like to hear uh, just a brief explanation and then caucus? How would you like to handle this? If we can actually think um, if we can do it where uh, we need to make more copies okay. as well um, and make sure that we have um, the complete proposals including what the CDC has as well. So I guess maybe if we hand them out and then we can caucus and have that conversation. I think um, my intention was when we came back to just very quickly run through. Um, them and not necessarily go into a lengthy rationale behind them, but if that works for everyone just doing, touching on those as to what we're looking at sort of philosophically and some of the changes, I think. Yep, we're, we're prepared to give a very brief, um, uh, I think you use the word justification, a very brief just sort of justification for each. I, I think we'd be agreeable to do that if you'd like to do that right now. Sure, would you like me to read out the language as defined, or do you want me to just? I think read the language, then give a brief description okay. of, of the reason that you should have um, you'll, You will notice that anything in bold um, qualifies as new language. So there are, um, there are certain things in here where we put the existing language and just bold it in places where we're changing language. Um, so if we start with 8.14, 
uh, we, well, yes, it states, um, as defined by relevant state and federal law <laughs> and district policies on safety, by way of example but not limitation, BOSHA and OSHA, teachers shall not be required to work under unsafe, unsafe or hazardous conditions or to perform tasks which endanger their health, safety, or well-being. Any alleged violation of the section which has been submitted to a state or federal administrative resolution process or court proceeding shall not be subject to the arbitration provision of this agreement. Um, safety has become an increasing concern for students and staff. We propose adding, we, our only changes we propose adding to district policies on safety so that that's included there. 10.1. Um, a teacher not on extended unpaid leave shall be entitled to 15 days of sick leave during each work year of employment on the first scheduled work day of such work year provided, however, that no sick leave shall be available to any teacher who subsequently fails to commence their duties for the work year involved. An employee retains active employee status while, utis while utilizing any paid time off. Uh, 10.1 proposes a clarification stating that an employee retains active employee status while utilizing any paid time in order to protect the employment status of critically ill or injured employees. 11.5a, um, terms and conditions, we propose um, a new term, number three, during a parental or family leave at the employee's option, the teacher will be granted up to 12 weeks paid leave outside of accrued sick or personal time. Since our district and community are losing young professionals um, at a growing rate, we're trying to find ways to keep young professionals uh, in our district and entice people to the area by making our parental leave competitive with other local districts. Um, 21, or four and then five under terms and conditions would then be duly adjusted. 21.2. Subject to the limitations provided below, the board shall reimburse a teacher for any college course approved in advance by the superintendent for that teacher, provided that the teacher receives a B minus or better grade, or if the course is pass fail, the teacher receives a grade of pass. Teachers will be reimbursed at University of Vermont rates up to a maximum of six semester hours per fiscal year. A board agrees to prepay for courses offered through Castleton State University, Southern New Hampshire University, or Vermont Higher Education Cooperative. If said employee does not meet the above stated grade or completion requirements, the employee must pay back the cost of the course within 45 days. Um, similarly to the adjustment in 11.5, many newer employees are financially unable to prepay for courses to advance their professional learning. We propose the board prepays courses offered by the three schools stated. This also provides equity for disciplines that are not represented in the district course offering. Uh, 29.18, am I going too fast or am I? No, it's good. 29.18, teachers may uh, but need not serve as a building administrator in the absence of the building administrator provided the teacher, once having agreed to so serve, completes that which the teacher has agreed to do. Said teacher will be duly compensated according to the coverage pay outlined in articles 29.26, 29.29F, 29.31E, and 29.32C. Uh, this ensures teachers covering for administrators are duly compensated for the liability and responsibility involved in the administrative, administrative position. Uh, 29.21 is just a clarification of language. If a teacher agrees to be the member of a school directed committee outside of contracted hours, they will be compensated at the regular per diem rate. Um, and as such, uh, 29.21 and 29.22 would then be adjusted in number. 29.23 slash 29.24. Teachers may be assigned to regular duty rosters by the principal to ensure adequate supervision of students. Duties shall be assigned on an equitable basis based on a consideration of both the type and relative time requirements of the specific duties. On a day a teacher is assigned to more than one building in the supervisory union, they shall not be assigned administrative duties. Um, we have proposed to eliminate the volunteer list for elementary schools. We acknowledge that duties are an important part of being an educator and provide a way of teachers and staff of being visible to students. 29.26, um, the board shall provide each teacher, this is in the elementary school language, 
I should specify that. Mm -hmm. The board shall provide each teacher with at least 40 consecutive minutes of preparation time each day for a total of at least 200 minutes per week. Preparation time is for the exclusive use of the teacher and will not be used for other meetings called by administration. Um, this specifies minutes for elementary school planning time, which is currently, uh, which currently does not exist in the contract. So it provides equity in that. 29.27. In addition to 29.26, in order to afford elementary teachers non-student contact time so they may collaborate with colleagues, e.g. grade level teachers, interventionists, special educators, etc., administrators must provide 60 minutes in no more than two blocks per week to meet these ends. Um, this provides collaboration time outside of prep time that aligns with district and building goals. 29.29a. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip down a little bit um, to the part that says student contact time is defined as time spent <coughs> providing additional academic support with the teachers, <coughs> enrolled students, student advisory periods, team meetings, uh, team spent, super time spent, I think that should be time spent supervising and behavioral detention, parent conferences and communication, IEP and special education support service meetings, and counseling meetings with students. Teachers shall be assigned a preparation period not less than the minutes of an instructional period. Um, this is in the middle school language, and it just it simply updates the middle school language based on uh, the current school schedule because the language was reflective of a pretty old um, middle school schedule. Okay, um, 29.32D is in the CDC portion of the contract. Um, in addition to the maximum core teaching time established in Article 29, Section 29.32a, teachers may be assigned up to 60 minutes of additional teaching time during either the fall or spring semester to teach an introductory course that is designed to prepare students to successfully participate in existing CDC programs or provide an opportunity for students to gain knowledge and skills in a career area. Teachers may agree to teach additional courses, but such additional courses will be paid an additional one-sixth of the applicable teacher's annual salary prorated for the number of days so assigned. Um, this aligns the CDC language with high school language so that they're more comfortable. Um, 30.2.C, all this one do this does is fixes a typo in the contract. Um, so the last phrase says the teacher's salary will be adjusted to provide the teacher two steps. The, there's a typo in the contract. I think it says the steps as opposed to two. Okay, 30.7. Uh, this is also in the, oh, sorry. This is in the professional advancement credit section. The superintendent shall designate in advance those professional advancement programs and activities which shall qualify a teacher to advance horizontally on the salary schedule. The term professional advancement programs refers to those programs and courses provided by the superintendent or their designee within the Southwest, Southwest Vermont Supervisory Union. Teachers within the SWVRTSD may receive credit upon approval of the superintendent or their designee for technical training programs slash courses which are necessary for CTE teachers to maintain their technical slash industry specific knowledge and or skills. These credits may be used for horizontal movement at the equivalent of 15 CTUs to one credit. Uh, this allows for CDC teachers to receive horizontal movement for the professional credits that they are required to, um, to keep up to uh, maintain their certification. All right, so um, Article 31 includes definitions and we've, um, we've included some more definitions to clarify uh, different, different teachers um, or different qualifications of teachers and this way we have all of our definitions in one place in the contract. Um, so teacher uh, is all employees within that bargaining unit recognized under Article 1 of this agreement employed by a given board. Article 1 includes persons certified by the Vermont State Board of Education as guidance counselors, librarians, speech and language pathologists, school-based clinicians, holding an educator's license, and school nurses. Article 1 also includes persons employed under contract of the board as teachers who are certified employable as teachers by the Vermont State Board of Education and who are not administrators but may be defined as coaches, special educators, or classroom teachers. Part-time teacher, a teacher who works at least an average of 20 hours per week. 
probationary teacher, a teacher who has yet to complete two school years of service. Completion of a school year shall require working no less than 160 student days during a single fiscal year. Non-probationary teacher, a teacher who has completed at least two school years. Completion of a school year shall require working no less than 160 student days during a single fiscal year. All right, the next one is in Appendix C. Um, it just aligns our CDC club advisors with each other. So that the CDC CTSO advisors, so that includes FBLA, DECA, Skills USA, HOSA, and FFA, are all adjusted to a Category 8 so that they are all on a comparable level um, according to comparable work. And our last proposal um, proposes equity in the language in our contract so that all he, she, and his, her language will be changed to they and there and there. Very good. Thank you. Does anybody have any, I think we'll wait to go into the caucus before we ask any questions and then come back to you. My understanding is that we don't have enough copies to give you. Why don't we pass them? Could, can you make some copies for us? Yeah, I've got it. That would be great. If this does not have the CDC. We should practice before we move the We, okay, right. So right. we have not all discussed this. Okay, yeah. right. You also have language which needs to be copied as well for everybody. Yes. So we've got two parts that we need to do, which is make copies. I suggest maybe we take the five minute, 10 minute break yeah. so we can get caucus it out. That makes sense yeah. so that we can yeah. get enough copies for Why everybody. Why don't you go lead the way and help them out? Yeah. Right. Are you, would you like us to leave or are you? No, no, we're just going to go around right now. Okay. And then we can, we can um, do the same thing for you and then we can each go to the conference. Okay. Right. Somebody make a motion so we can go. Well, we're in public session. But yeah, we're making it. Okay, that's fine. They're going to make some copies. You have the copier key, right? We haven't discussed this. Oh, yeah, we're. Yeah. We're, we're caucusing for um, No, we're not no. going to caucus right now. We're going to work to be, get the um, stuff off. Then we're going to go during caucus. caucus? This, no. Since we during caucus, does the uh, camera the turn off? Go ahead. The camera change. Yeah, hands it up. Well, well, we're we're, we're, we're right. just going to take a five minute break so that we can get the things copied. So during breaks, the camera does shut off? We can mute it. Thank you. Okay, that would be great. We're going to mute it. So we'll just. We'll let you guys know if we'll go to another, we'll go to the law enforcement in five minutes. Does everybody have a copy? Before we begin, we did just want to answer your question about IRA. We are definitely agreeable to, to, Very good. to IRA. Very good. Well, if it's agreeable, we should have one person that does the contact, Nick, and we ask you to, to do that. Uh, or do you know Norm? Or do you know Norm? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's after February 13th. Yep. You can call and reserve the date. That's kind of What we'd like to do, um, and this is the same procedure that you followed, we'll have Dana um, uh, read through it quickly and, and give a brief explanation. So you're off. Um, sorry, I've got multiples here. Okay. Uh, you'll see at the top is that obviously uh, with the Union Elementary District, we need to modify the cover page as well as Article 1, um, which lists out Bennington School District and each individual uh, elementary school district, Cavanaugh, Shaftesbury. Uh, the board is proposing to modify Article 10 of sick leave uh, to explain where this goes, because this is a, somewhat of a big change for all of you, 10.1, uh, the board is proposing to reduce the annual amount of accrual from 15 days to 10 days of sick leave. Uh, we're retaining that, that you get it on the first scheduled work day um, of this. And also in terms of the unused sick leave for the teachers employed by the boards as of June 30th, 2020, that the maximum of 180 days would be grandfathered in, but teachers hired from July 1st, 2020 and on shall be permitted to accumulate 100 school days. 
Uh, part of this is if you also go down, I also left in the other provisions so you could see how they work with those. Uh, in 10.4, well, let me back up, I'm sorry. For 10.1, you'll see uh, as part of the board's proposal that what the board <coughs> is proposing is instead of currently right now, there is an un a, a virtually unused benefit for teachers, which is long-term disability insurance. Uh, part of why it is uh, vir virtually unused by any of your colleagues is because <coughs> it has a 180 calendar day exclusionary period, meaning that the individual ha uh, would be out for up to 180 days while the decision is making in terms of whether or not they would be entitled to long-term <coughs> disability. The district and, and the board have investigated shortening that to the standard that you'll see around the state, which is a 90 calendar day exclusionary period. So the 100 days of the sick leave <coughs> that uh, new employees would be getting would cover them because, as I said, it's 90, day, 90 calendar days, not 90 work days. So it is, in effect, a three month exclusionary period. Uh, would still permit a new employee to have you know, the ability to, over time, get up to enough where they would have days that would cover that. For those of you who are already at the max of 180 school days, clearly those people <coughs> already have enough days to cover from the date of, of dis onset of a disability or, or a long-term illness until long-term disability would, in fact, <coughs> come into play. Um, 10.4, uh, in the event of the absence of a teacher because of illness or injury for more than four days in any work year, the teacher shall, upon request of the superintendent, submit a medical report of health care provider uh, as defined by FMLA. The reason for the, the shift to four days as opposed to five is that the employer actually under FMLA has time frames that they in fact have to, the board has to in fact, or HR does I should say particularly, have to submit um, paperwork back to the employee. And so that is putting it within time uh, that the decision would be made within five days for the employer to be making it so that we have that time frame to do it as opposed to on the fifth day getting the paperwork. You'll see that um, the sick bank in 10.5, we're removing it for the purpose, as I said, of that providing the long-term disability insurance uh, with a 90-day exclusionary period. Um, you know, sick banks exist uh, in order to help cover those employees who have those lengthy illnesses uh, as part of what they are. And we're, we're operating under a belief of that actually utilizing one of the benefits of the long-term disability insurance, which has existed in your contract for some time, um, but hasn't been used would be a positive <coughs> for all of us. Uh, proposal on Article 11, which is uh, conditions of leave, different leaves. Um, under 11.53, um, there's a clarification of that teacher use of, u utilizing available sick leave for a disability resulting from or contributed to by reason of pregnancy, childbirth, or miscarriage. Uh, would be considered as leave under FMLA or VPFLA provisions of the agreement, which are found under 11.1. Um, subpart B uh, is also a clarification of what has been occurring over time with the contract, with the language of the employee who should, was responsible for paying of the health insurance premium, same to the board monthly in advance. Uh, what that actually, in fact, on a daily basis or on a on a daily basis turns out to be is that the employee who is out pays the full monthly premium. The payment of the premium shall be made on or before the fifteenth day of each month in order to continue their health insurance for an individual who's out on an unpaid leave of absence. Um, so as opposed to having teachers pay for it in advance, we're saying that they can pay for it the 15th month, up to the 15th, up to the 15th day, excuse me, of the month of coverage. 11.11 um, .11 .11 statutory leave talks about the Family uh, and Medical Leave Act 
and the Vermont Parental and Family Leave Act, it's actually, it's not. And the change that we're making here is, is there are two changes, which is that employees, and by policy, uh, employees have been required to use leave balances during the pendency of their FMLA or their Vermont Parent Family Leave um, so we're adding that in, that has been occurring. Um, employees shall remain liable for the employee share of any health or dental premium during the pendency of, of the FMLA leave with payments either continuing through standard deduction from payroll if the employee has a leave balance or by direct payment by the, employee by the 15th day of each month. That is um, provided for under FMLA, which is that employees are treated uh, in terms of their health insurance benefits the same way that they were treated if they were not on that leave, which you all do make your payments on a monthly basis for your health insurance. So the re what was removed is that it is actually, in fact, from the board's perspective, redundant past the point that the board shall comply with the requirements of the Family Medical Leave Act and the Vermont P Parental and Family Leave Act. Um, those both, both of those uh, laws uh, define what is a serious medical condition or what is a, an event which permits accessing of either of those statutes uh, protections. And by complying with it, the only um, actual deviance from the, the statute that the board has done in previous negotiations and the board is leaving in is the requirement that an employing district employ at least 50 employees um, prior to the consolidation of your elementary schools. There were some uh, districts that did not in fact fit that. Article 29.1 um, talks about the I, I'm sorry, we haven't made a change in there. I want to make sure that we understand that underline came with how it was printed. 29.4 is where we're talking about the work year and the amount of days and how those days are designated out. Uh, currently, you all are under contract for 187 and one half days. Um, the board is proposing that we, in fact, keep that level of overall days, but reduce the student contact days. The student contact days would be reduced to 174.5, uh, which would then leave 13 in-service days. Please strike out the provision, the, the underline of the new language, this provision shall not modify the calendar or student contact days for the CDC. The CD, strike that out, strike that out, um, because the CDC, it has the obligation of making sure their calendar aligns with surrounding schools. It, it wasn't clear until um, we went over this that this in fact won't in, will not negatively impact the CDC. So the CDC would fall under this provision as well. So the 179 and a half student contact days would be reduced to 174.5. That uh, then implicates provision 29.6 regarding professional learning and in-service days. Uh, we are proposing to leave of those 13 in-service days that two remain teacher designated in-service days um, and are used for classroom preparation and closing at the discretion of the teacher. Uh, we're in increasing one in-service day shall be scheduled for each grade level to be used as a teacher workday with the individual teacher solely responsible for planning that workday to three as opposed to one. We're also proposing that instead of four that we move to six days are uh, professional learning days to be developed collaboratively with the SVSU administrators, pre professional development committee and principals to meet uh, school improvement needs and keeping the remaining the remaining days of two days for building professional learning days to meet school improvement goals. Under the middle school provisions of 29.29, we actually 
I think, have our first thing that we that we can check off that we've agreed to immediately on the first go around. Um, yes, the language of, of the of actually designating minutes is not appropriate at this point in time. It is whatever a block shall be. Um, and we have changed that language as well in B to being a block of instructional assignment as opposed to a set amount of minutes as well. So at least on 29.29A, I think tonight we probably can say yeah. <laughs> right. Um, the Mount Anthony Union High School uh, provisions under 29.31, we are proposing to um, change B with the addition of the language that the remaining, there are remaining of 45 minutes when you break down how the time is now allocated under the contract for high school teachers, which are, it is neither considered uh, prep time, collaborative time, or uh, student contact time. There's, there's 45 minutes of each day um, that is just out there that is not being um, utilized directly for anything which would be student focused or professional learning or, or to help push through some of the school initiatives that come up um, that need to be handled. So the board is proposing that those remaining 45 minutes of time may be assigned for professional learning or school initi initiatives at the discretion of the building administrator. Um, Article 30. Uh, 30.2B, currently when somebody comes in and is, is being uh, considered and offered employment as a teacher within this district, um, the superintendent views the years that they were licensed previously. So you have individuals who have worked at um, private schools who haven't been licensed during part of the time frame. Um, so we wanted to provide some clarity about that what we're talking about in terms of placement at the experience step of the years of licensed teaching, but also adding something which exists right now to a certain degree for the CDC, and it also exists in other school districts, which is you may in fact have people who come in from private industry who have some type of work experience which has some benefit for the school district. And we would like that the superintendent we're proposing that the superintendent has the ability to provide, um, when they're offering that, some credit towards that work experience um, in, in determining what would be the proper step placement and putting the limiter, which is, I think, while it doesn't sound when you read it on the paper necessarily as as straightforward it is, is that such discretion shall not be arbitrary or capricious. I, you know, Jim cannot, or if the next superintendent in at some point, cannot just decide arbitrarily, I really like this woman who came in and, and let's give her you know, five years of experience as a chemist at Dow Chemical and we have somebody else come in and yeah, you know, I don't really want to give them any experience at all. But it's, it's to provide some flexibility and we think as well to have the ability to attract um, new employees as, as we need, and specifically in, in, in coming from occupations, which would be a benefit overall for the school district. 30.4 is um, a proposal of talking about the first time that teachers uh, receive their paycheck. We are proposing instead of the board's regularly scheduled payday on its pace day cycle following the first work day of the given work year, which, by the way, is, is quite confusing when you read it, but we're proposing that it be the second Thursday, <coughs> excuse me, of the school year, and we're proposing this for two main reasons. One is, a lot, uh, frequently we don't have new hires on board, um, or, or having problems getting new hires and their documentation on board. This would permit us to, to have that um, extra time to, in, to resolve that. And the second one is the way that it is within the contract, actually you start off with an overpayment. Teachers are actually paid for work that they have not done. We're just trying to align it 
more in vision <coughs> with what the Department of Labor and Wage and Hour would consider. I think that was it for the general ones, correct? There are some changes, um, and I, did, I didn't note them. Uh, there is a need to get rid of on the salary schedule. I think it's B, BA3. There are some that don't exist anymore. Uh, there are some of those sort of changes there. In terms of for the, uh, the, the technical um, center, under uh, 29.34, we're proposing to remove the word Senate from there. Um, 11.6B, a personal leave may not be used during, during the change the first two and last two work weeks of the school year. So that is adding the addition of the first two work weeks of the school year. Um, I, the 29.20 is, is do you, I can do one more of these. Probably doesn't have it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't it's the last page. It's the last page, Leah. Yeah. This is different. This is different. This is the same one. Do you have the, the copies? Yeah. Um, on 29.20, it, it's a proposal to add that uh, teachers will be required to attend two open houses. Um, 29.33, uh, the board is willing to strike as long as the change that 29.32B happens. Uh, and, the, and the change is the 29.32B that's being proposed for, this, for the CDC is that the superintendent uh, director will assure teachers will stay in compliance with state board rule 2370, which is the CTE regulations, and that teachers are expected to fulfill their professional obligations such as state cluster meetings, professional networking activities, and school or program improvement activities. We can provide further um, discussion, obviously, about these, and I can also have, make sure that they get put into the, the provision so you can see where the change is. 27.7, um, the proposal is that for the, for the tech center is that teachers remain on probationary status until the teacher completes three school years. After three years, the teacher, teachers that have not obtained level one Vermont professional educator license with the appropriate CTE endorsement will remain as a probationary teacher until such license is obtained. That's a change to the beginning of the provision. 29.32D, um, <coughs> proposing that teachers assigning or agreeing to teach additional classes under the section shall not be assigned administrative non-teaching duties during the semesters when so engaged, we're, we're proposing to remove that. Uh, 29.32B, Teachers may be assigned up to an annual average of 20 minutes per day of administrative duties. It's also seeking to do that. 25.1, designees must be licensed administrators employed by the board. They cannot be merely uh, designated as supervisors. 31.4, there are some positions which are listed such as business manager and other positions. Do you want to explain this one? If you in the defining of administrator, it lists business manager and other appropriate positions, but yet an administrator can evaluate a teacher. So there was some concern that that would mean that anyone that's defined as an administrator, including business managers and others, could then be evaluators. So clarifying the definition so that that doesn't happen. Um, can I just make one question? Can I ask? Certainly. Can I ask? Sure. <laughs> um, for the CDC proposals, um, I'm definitely clear on what uh, the first probably three mean. Um, but is there a way to get in writing 
just so that we can see what it looks like, um, 29.32 and 29.33. Yes, yeah, I think what we can what we can do is I can send out to you guys by email where these provisions within the the language within the contract as well, so you can see exactly how they interplay. That would be great. Thank you. Um, it, it's a and I and I do apologize. It is a little difficult to look at it um, outside of the whole provision, but we did want to uh, make sure that we identified for you some concern and areas of concern and modification that the, that the CDC is looking for. The thirty one point four. Um, my understanding is, and, and we can go through it, is, is, is obviously to make sure that it's a licensed profession, a licensed educator slash administrator who's is evaluating. is evaluating. And so we can, you, you will more than likely see probably a little bit more specific language regarding that as well. Uh, I have one other clarification. Yeah. Um, and on 10.3, so on the front page on 10.3, there was nothing changed to 10.3. No, and I apologize. It's it, what happens when you take a PDF and you then put yeah, it into a convert it to a Word document. So that happened in two places. It happened, yeah, it happened in that other place, which I heard. as well, which also caught me as I was going through it. So I was just I just wanted to clarify. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I want to. Um, say this is that we are, are open to having um, a thoughtful discussion clearly the issue of uh, sick day accrual uh, the sick bank is something which the board uh, is very mindful of what that impact is uh, you know a sick bank is and, and you've heard it before I'm sure uh, an unfunded Sort of amount of days there they're not budgeted out um, the intention of, of opening up and taking a look at what is happening with the sick leave is to have an, a, a thoughtful discussion about creating perhaps a new or an alternative way of addressing um, what's going on and you know we can talk about that obviously in more detail when we talk about the specific provisions but the board does recognize that that is, in fact, a, a pretty significant change that we've put out there for you. Um, can I can I just ask? Um, do we know how many days are currently in the sick bank? We do. Uh, I can get those numbers. We also have, by virtue of uh, the software that is uh, used to track the sick leave, we have what the we can you know tell you how many days on this day how many teachers were out and that is a concern um, in, in the district so we can absolutely provide you with what the amount of sick days are that are sitting in the sick bank um, you know i think the the modification to having that long-term disability as a benefit being u utilized in appropriate cases is something that it's sitting out there right now, and so the board is concerned there's a benefit that's being paid for that's sitting out there um, that is not being utilized, and it actually, in fact, can answer a lot of the issues regarding what the sick bank addresses. So I just wanted to put that out there that we, we get that it is uh, truly understand and we're cognizant that that is a shift, a significant shift that we're talking about in terms of thinking about these problems. So um, I don't know if you want to go into caucus and talk about this. The other thing I would say, some of your proposals uh, in terms of minutes and scheduling and, and, and of those just so that you're aware as we're going through um, would require obviously some input that we would have to get from building administrators about how they feel that that would impact on their, um, you know, their running of, of their programs in their school. And so some of those we may in fact bring in, you know, them to talk about that or we may um, have to hold off until we get from them a, a, a formalized response about how that impacts. So I just wanted to let you all know that as well. I don't know if there are any other questions about what the proposal is. Um, the, uh, the superintendent is planning to meet with the administrators of the different schools. 
as Dina has said, to review the impact of some of your suggestions on the daily running of, of those schools. And therefore, we really aren't in a position to uh, discuss them in any detail until we get that input. Uh, just, just, just see what it, what it is. So I think at this time, we'll caucus, um, come back with any questions um, that we have. Um, 10 minutes? Okay. Yeah, you can, you know where to find us. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be sure that I understand, what we're going to do with the CDC proposals, we're going to incorporate them in the general contract. Right. So they'll be listed as, as yeah. 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 want to since there is in public session and, and since we had at our previous meeting talked about dates uh, just make sure uh, that we understand December uh, 5th is um, unfortunately we it's off the schedule at this point I think that's fine we have another date in December which is December 19th uh, which we will meet here as well um, I'm assuming we have the room. If for some reason that is a problem, then obviously we'll, we will let you know. But the December 5th date is off the schedule. Um, other than that, if there are questions uh, that you have, if it's something that we can answer now, we'll answer them, or, or it may be something that we sort of take the question and, and we then have a conversation amongst ourselves about have best to respond to you. So with the December 5th date off of the off the table, um, we do need to amend the ground rules um, to uh, show that we may see <coughs> language for the December 19th meeting and the January 16th meeting. Yeah. Um, and we will, that will get to us through email for me to sign. Will it be available at central office for me to sign the ground rules when it's finalized? What is the easiest way to do it? I'm sorry that I interrupted you. You know, you're fine. Um, we, if you send it through email, I can sign it and drop it at central. Would that be the, the easiest? Because I see that you also have to sign it? Yes. Okay. So do we want to pass it through Nick? Nick yeah, I think we do. Yeah, we can okay. get it. Uh, it'll either be through Nick or um, or my uh, paralegal. Okay. Two, so. Okay. Um, as for questions, um, we have decided that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, there are a couple things. Also, since the December fifth date is off the schedule, it'll make sense why one of the things we're requesting is in here. Um, so the first thing we're requesting is to know how many days are in the sick bank, which you already said you will um, give us. Uh, we would also really like to see the attendance reports, just because you mentioned that um, you have a report that shows how many people are out on particular days. Um, uh, we don't need names, obviously, but um, that would be great. Uh, we would like to know how many people are signed up for long-term disability as of right now. Um, we request the CDC section written up, which you also said you would do. Um, and our last one, and this is this we're asking because our next meeting isn't until after December 15th. Um, we just want to know how many people uh, are using or have used all of their um, all of their deductible portion that's paid for by the board. Uh, so currently, there's a portion of each person's deductible in the health insurance that's covered by the board. Um, we would like to know how many people use all of that deductible portion. And again, we're asking for that because the December 15th decision will have already been made um, so that we can try to come up with a proposal 
for that stuff as well. So I just want to make sure. Yes. That, uh, we will get how many days in a, in a sick bank? There are approximately a thousand, but we'll get you uh, an actual count of that. Uh, you want the report of sick leave usage? I will talk to Nick and HR about that um, in terms of what the time frame is that we have that we can when utilizing the software, okay. we can do that for you. Uh, you want the number of individuals who are currently signed up for long-term disability. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the CDC language, I will get to you uh, in terms of within the context of the provisions. And the number of people who have used all of the deductible portion paid by the board. So out of the 2,500, if I'm a single person, the percentage that the board uh, is responsible for that, and you want to know how many of them have utilized Correct. the board's share. Um, and also, just a clarification with the sick bank, um, it would be great to know approximately how many applications are received um, for the sick bank per year and the average length of said requests. So, Okay, so I'm not sure how much data we have on that. So if we that, we're just kind of we're just kind no, of looking for it. Yeah. So I'm just I, I mean one year I don't think is going to be informative, um, <coughs> but I also don't want to inundate um, the HR. People. And I and I know HR yeah. just has has records dating back to a certain point. Um, so just okay. so we'll work on that and just more information. Yeah. Itself. Um, the other thing that we just want to request um, is that when the superintendent when the superintendent speaks with building admin administrators, um, that he speak to all elementary administrators uh, because currently um, time is not equitable amongst the schools, and so some schools are already getting the the minutes that we are proposing. Um, so we just request that the superintendent talk to all the schools. Uh, do we want to? That's up to you. Mm -hmm. I, you can tell us after. Yeah. Cool. You, you that would be great. Just like we're requesting here. Yeah. Us, if yep. you yes, we we will, yes. We can get that. Yes. Absolutely. We will. We will, we will confirm. We will confirm, confirm yeah. our information and share it with you. Yep. We would appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Is that it? Is there anything else? Are there questions that you have regarding the provision, or is it just the, the provisions that are provided, or the information? I, I think that's, um, I don't think we have really any clarifying questions. Um, there, hmm? yes, uh, except for the, um, the one middle school provision uh, for 29.29A. Um, we just wanted to suggest that the one block be clarified to be one instructional block. Just putting the other. Oh, so I put the instructional mm -hmm. Yep. I think that's, I think that's fine. Um, if we put instructional, do you believe that we have a tentative agreement on that? I believe we do. Okay, so uh, can I also send that to you by email? Absolutely. For your review to do it, and then when we come back on the 19th, we can start off from the positive note. Beautiful. Oh, I, yeah, I, I apologize. Uh, the language change about pronouns, we absolutely do uh, agree to that. Uh, we're going to have to prove the right. contract. Yeah. I'm not going to provide all the places, you know, go through the contract right now. I think when we finalize what the contract is, we'll do that. I think that's something we can work together on. Okay, I think that's great. But, that's um, but I did want to make sure thank you very much Tim, for reminding me that we, that we absolutely do. Great. Um, but back to the tentative agreement, we can start off the next time with the positive of signing off the tentative. Perfect. Absolutely. All right. Um, is there anything else, gentlemen, that I have this skipped over? We're all good. We're all good. good. Uh, then uh, if there are no other questions or concerns that want to be voiced at this time, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So move. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank